Hi everyone, this video is an update to our old Storm Injector video which was uploaded about six months ago when the software was first released. Since then we've had over 15 new versions with bug fixes and new features and the software is due to come out of beta on the 1st of June 2018. So I just wanted to give you an overview of these new features. So we have a new step in the process now which is importing your rainfall runoff model. This was introduced to facilitate spatial variation of rainfall across subcatchments. So now the first step is to import a model in various formats into the project. For this example we will be using the WBNM sample file Sorrel Chloric. This model has MGA coordinates which will convert to latitude and longitude by clicking yes then MGA zone 55 and you'll see that the latitude and longitude are now populated. You'll also see that the latitude and longitude in the top boxes has been populated with the average of the subcatchment centroid coordinates which means we can now easily download the ARNR data hub information directly from the web. After we click ingest data, we'll see that the temporal patterns have all been populated along with pre-burst information, error reduction factor parameters and other metadata. Now if we want to do a spatial varying analysis we can look at the subcatchments in a graphical display to see their spatial distribution and we can download IFD data at the centroids of some of these subcatchments. For example if we picked subcatchment 5, 8 and 12 we can then go back and pick those rows using the control key in the model tab and then using the drop down box download the ARNR 2016 information for all those subcatchments automatically. You'll see in the download form that we're downloading three IFD locations and Storm Injector will handle that without any further intervention. At this stage you can see all the IFDs locations have been updated in the Rainfall Depths panel and they can be viewed and charted easily. We can now assign the IFD depths to each subcatchment based on its closest IFD location using the drop down box assign closest IFD locations for subcatchment using latitude and longitude. If we go back to the spatial display now we can see that the subcatchments closest to each of the IFD locations have been assigned those depths. Now we're in a position to create some storms. If we pick the 1% AEP rare temporal pattern and click create storms, we can see that all the ARFs, storm burst losses and storms have been calculated. You can see in the storms panel now that we have multiple IFD locations, multiple IFD depths listed in the storms panel and they will these will be assigned to each subcatchment in the rainfall runoff model based on the spatial assignment in the project setup panel. A further new feature of Storm Injector is the ability to do very frequent rare or ARNR 1987 storms. You just need to download that IFD information. And that's also done in the get IFD data button where you can automatically download other IFD types for all the ARNR 2016 locations. For example if we wanted to do some rare IFDs we would pick the rare IFD 2016 option. Storm Injector will now go and download the rare IFDs for all those three IFD locations. You'll note in the Rainfall Depths panel that these IFD locations are given a suffix of rare to identify them as the rare rainfall events and these include depths for the 1 in 100 through to the 1 in 2000 
rainfall events. Once the new IFD data has been downloaded, we can add storms for these events by switching to the rare option in the selected events panel, clicking one of the options, and then we can create storms. Now, if we want to create more storms and add them to the storms that are already in the list, we can use the drop down box and select add to existing list of storms. Now we're warned here that there are no depths for durations less than 12 hours and if we click continue those durations will not be included. If we look in the storms panel now we'll see we have the 1% AEP storms at the top followed by the 1 in 2000 rare events at the bottom. We can now prepare the model runs by clicking button number 5 and clicking the same WBNM file. We'll be taken to the model runs tab where a list of all 310 storms that we need to process for the 1% and the 2000 year event are listed. We can now click run models and storm injector will run the WBNM models in the background. We've got four running simultaneously so we can see that it's quite quick. Once complete we can click 7 process results to analyse all the outputs. We can see that the event is listed in the configure results panel and every subcatchment is shown and the mean flow of all those temporal patterns is listed along with the adopted temporal pattern details. From this point you can do box plots for any subcatchment and you can even compare events for selected durations or for the critical durations. You can also chart hydrographs for all the temporal patterns for any subcatchment. You can include rainfall in your charts and you can also chart total or local hydrographs for rafts and WBNM. You can also compare events including rainfall in the charting and display peak information or even rainfall information. Now let's say we wanted to also estimate the 2000 year event using the growth curve approach so we can have durations of less than 24 hours. This can be done using a custom event. An example of this is this command here. There's plenty of information on our help file about this. The terminology here means we're doing a rainfall increase using the 1% AEP, a 69.8% increase using a rare temporal pattern and we'll rename this event the 2000 year ARI. If we uncheck the old event, click create storms and add to list, we'll now see at the very bottom there's a new event called the 2000 year ARI that is based on the 1% AEP with a 69.8% depth adjustment. If we prepare these models we can see that these new event storms have been added to the bottom. Now there's no need to run all the old events as well. We can simply right click on the new ones, select all for this event, right click run all selected. Storm Ejector would now run those new growth curve events in the background. Once complete we can click process results again and now we will have three events listed in the configure results panel. We can see that with the growth curve approach we have a higher average flow because we are now using a 9 hour duration storm. This is also reflected in the box plots where we can see that the 2000 year growth curve estimate based on a 9 hour storm has a considerably higher mean flow than the 48 hour rare event temporal pattern. 
final thing I wanted to show you was the refined subcatchments and temporal pattern analysis components. If we were only interested in the results at a number of subcatchments, we could select them in the refined subcatchments panel. As an example, let's select subcatchments 10 to 17 with the exception of 14. We can see now that the subcatchment results have been filtered to only show those subcatchments, but more importantly, the temporal pattern analysis grid has been updated to only yield results based on those seven selected subcatchments. We can sort by the number of times adopted a temporal pattern is adopted, or we can sort by how closely a given temporal pattern represents the mean flows for those subcatchments. We can even right click and add a selected temporal pattern as a comparison to temporal pattern. And if we select that in the compare comparison TPs panel and refresh, we'll see a new column in the subcatchment results that lists the difference in the mean flow for that subcatchment compared with the comparison temporal pattern or temporal patterns that have been selected. This can be used to help inform which temporal patterns you might like to model in a hydraulic model if you can't model them all. Now, the reason we didn't include subcatchment 14 is it has a much lower contributing area and which gives it a lower critical duration and also quite a high ARF error, which storm injector is, in, is telling us about in this column. That's the difference between the ARF calculated for that subcatchment's contributing area versus the model as a whole. We hope these tools can help improve your Australian Rainfall and Runoff 2016 Rainfall Runoff modelling and we encourage you to visit our website, download a trial of the software and give it a go. Thanks for your time.